You know, it is always a pleasure to be with you on my podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the different ways God speaks to you. So many of you want God to speak to you. You want to hear him. You want to know how. You know, you've heard other people say, God told me, you know, certain things. And you're like, well, you know, why is he not speaking to me? I want you to know that God, yes, he's speaking. He doesn't have preferences, if you will, you know, meaning that he speaks to some and he doesn't speak to others. God is speaking every day. You know, if you're willing to hear his voice, you can hear it. And perhaps maybe you've made some bad decisions in your life. Uh, Perhaps you are waiting to get clarity on a particular decision that you need to make. Your back is against the wall. Um, You're running out of time and you want to make sure you get it right this time. Well, this podcast is for you. And I hope that if you know someone in your life that desperately need a message like this, you need to forward this podcast in helping them uh, to uh, be able to hear God's voice. He's speaking, and I don't know. I believe I am sent today to speak to someone. Sir, you have been literally praying hard, crying your heart out. Your emotions are all over the place. Listen to me, woman. Your emotion is all out over the place and you're quite discouraged and frustrated because you're praying, 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 and you can't find the answer. You're asking God multiple times over the same issue and you can't get clarity. Well, perhaps today's podcast will give you that clarity. So there are several ways you can hear God speak to you. First thing I want you to do is this, you must establish a consistent prayer life. I know, I know maybe you're turned off already and you're like, I don't even want to hear this. Listen, you're not going to hear God clearly if you don't have the proper line of communication. You know, I have several times been on my cell phone and on my cell phone, I have attempted to call people and I can't tell you how many times with my cell phone, I would make this statement repeatedly. I would say, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Maybe we have a bad connection. You know, I I want you to know that if you have a bad connection, if your life is full of clutter and uh, drama, if you are around the wrong people, if the people who are in your environment are prohibiting you from hearing God, then absolutely you're not going to get clarity. You're not going to hear him. So you have to develop this consistent prayer life. You got to pray because prayer is the line of communication, the clear line of communication that no demonic forces, Satan himself cannot interrupt. He cannot interrupt the line of communication through prayer. So I know we get busy, we get frustrated, we get all um, distracted from praying. We, 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 are, we, you know, listen, <laughs> when it comes to our phones, we will never leave home without it. Multiple times a day, you'll be shocked at the numbers, the stats that says, um, you know, the amount of time we spend every day on our phones, on social media, etc., on our computers, our tablets, and so forth. Well, if if we can spend that much time trying to connect with the virtual world, we need to connect to our spiritual God through prayer. So you got to get your prayer life right. And by the way, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't fuel your your prayers with the word, then you're going to pray all kinds of crazy prayers. I can't tell you how many times for years I was just praying out of my emotions. I was just praying, you know, because I I didn't know any better. But when I got to read in the word, I find that the word of God, the Bible, it helps me a lot to, um, to, 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 to pray more effectively. So you've got to pray. So here's how you can hear God. 
Here's the different ways you can hear God. I just told you through the Bible. That's the first way. You got to read the Bible because in the Bible, it gives answers to the questions that you have. Now I get it. Some of you are frustrated with reading the Bible. It doesn't make sense half the time, (laughs) you know, and you can't connect it. Some people think if you read from Genesis to Revelation in that chronological order that Perhaps you can understand the Bible. You cannot understand the chronology of the Bible by doing that, right? You you have to have a well thought out, um, you know, Bible plan, Bible reading plan in order to fully understand the Bible. However, if you start out with certain scriptures and so forth, you can hear God because he will bring back to your remembrance in the, the, the time of need what he has said about those things. So you need to read the Bible. Then, of course, you need to pray. So number one is you need to read the Bible. Number two, you need to pray because reading the Bible and prayer helps you to hear God clearly. And then you can hear God through a sermon. Now, a sermon could be in the form of several ways. For example, right now I'm on this podcast. I'm not on stage preaching a message, but I'm a messenger because a sermon is just a content of a message that comes from God through a messenger. So when you go to church, when you look at social media, when you stream, you know, you're hearing a sermon. Today, you're hearing a sermon. You're hearing me through this podcast, giving you tools to help you to hear God clearly. Then you can hear God through a friend. Absolutely. You can hear God through a friend. Now, remember earlier on, I told you it is very important for you to know who's in your inner circle, who's in your environment, your space, because the people that you invite in your inner circle can, you know, literally ultimately determine the level of your success or if you'll be successful at all. You have to make sure the people that's in your life close to you are people themselves are not full of clutter. They're not toxic. These got to be people that you know are hearing from God. In other words, they're reading their Bible, they're praying, and watch this, they have a good heart, and they mean you well. Listen, you'll be shocked at the people you think would be there for you, would support you, would stand in the gap for you. You'll be shocked to know that some of them are very jealous, some of them are have ulterior motives, They're just in your life for what they can get, and they can pretend, and they pretend real good. And in most cases, you'll find that out. You'll find out that they're not really for you during tough times. Hello, during tough times, they will bail out on you in a minute. During tough times, they will sell you out. They'll betray you. They'll kiss you, and at the same time, sell you out to their friends or your friends. So you've got to make sure you identify the friends, the friends that are in your life, because if that friend is hearing from God, and by the way, did God place that person in your inner circle? I always ask God, give me friends that you meant for me to have, because no matter what we go through, if God placed that friend in my life, I'm going to value that friend, whatever that friend says to me. Though it may be difficult for me to receive, I'm going to trust that friend because God will use that friend to say something that he wants me to hear. So yes, he will speak to you through a friend. Who's your friend? Maybe that's a question I need to ask you. Who's your friend? What's coming out of their mouth? Is it gossip? Is it words that if you're really spiritually in tune And if you're a decent, sincere person, I mean, is it nice? Is it nice? What about the personality of the person? You'll be shocked, man. You'll be shocked at the behavior of some people. Think about that. You you need to get to a place where you start discerning the people around you. Don't let people come and talk nice to you because there are people who will be nice to you and Oh, they will talk sweet to you and to another person. They are nasty. They are 
disrespectful, they are dirty, and they are a big liar. I'm telling you, you need to make sure that you don't have a bipolar friend. I hate to say it. Now, I'm not talking in the context of somebody truly is seeking for medical help. They're bipolar and so forth. I get that. But there are some people who are sent by Satan in your life. You think that they're friends, that they are your friend, but they're spiritually bipolar. I mean, when they're in front of you, oh, they act a certain way. In a five minutes, they act a different way. When they're behind your back, I mean, they're, they're, their attitude is all over the place. You cannot hear from God if you've got the wrong friend in your life. That friend will never protect you. You want good people that God placed in your life because then he will speak to them at times to comfort you. You want a friend that when they come to you and they say, God told me to tell you certain things, you don't have to question it. You don't have to think, is it really God? Did he really hear from God? Did he really hear from God? You will quickly say, God, thank you. I receive it. You'll quickly receive it because not everybody who comes to you and say, God said, you ought to believe them. Some of them, God did not tell them anything, nothing. They just make up stories and so forth. So, you know, you got people out there professing to be prophets and prophetesses and all this kind of a stuff. You better be careful, man. You better be careful. Listen to whom God sent into your life. And nobody should be feeling offended about this. If you know you're sincere and if you know God has anointed you and he has used you and placed you in other people's lives. Come on now. Only people who know that the word today is hitting them should feel a negative way about it. And if you've got people in your life that God has sent you to, don't back away from it. Keep speaking the word of God as long as you know God is speaking to you. And if you have friends in your life that say they're speaking to you or not even if they're speaking the word of God to you, why have a friend who can't hear from God? Think about that. Why would you have a friend who can't hear from God? You want somebody in your life who can hear from God. That when God speaks to them, they can come to you, thus saith the Lord, and you got it. <laughs> and you got it. Are you hearing me? So I want to encourage you, my friends, hear from the Lord through a friend. Another way you can hear God speak to you, and, and I love this, and this is the last one I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. He can speak to you through a dream. Now, I got to caution you. Because our body is made up in a certain way that if certain things takes place, the body reacts a certain way. What do I mean by that? There's such a thing as if you take certain medicine, the side effect of the medicine, you know, will cause you to be hallucinated, you know, and you dream and all that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Because not every dream you receive you ought to think of anything of it. You know, I, I don't dream a lot. I don't really dream a lot. But when I do dream dreams, I know the difference. I know the dreams that I should like. Please don't even think about that. That's crazy. That you just, you're just all over the place, Henry. And it's okay. But there are times when I'll have a dream and I will tell you, God spoke, man. He spoke on February 22nd, 2020, 2 Early in the morning, I had the most amazing dream. I've been praying about something, I mean, for a long time, long time. And I didn't get the answer, the clarity. And some of you can relate to what I'm saying. That's why I'm here today to tell you, Whenever you pray about something, don't you ever give up. Don't you get frustrated. Don't you think that God doesn't want to hear you. Don't you ever get mad at God. He operates with his own timing. You just need to make sure that you are in position to hear him either speak to you through his word, through prayer, hear him speak to you through a friend or a sermon 
or through a dream. I was in a dream that morning on February 22nd, 2020, and the Lord showed me a beautiful picture. And I'm not going to go into the dream because it's for me. Because you see, here's another thing. Some dreams, you just keep it to yourself. Some dreams, people don't need to hear it. And I know you're just kind of sitting like, then tell me the dream, Henry. Nope, that's my dream. It's not a dream for you guys, but you'll get the message of what I'm trying to say here. I got this dream and God uses certain things in the dream that blew my mind. When I tell you my vibes and energy that day was lit. My energy was on high frequency that day still is to this day. As you're watching this podcast, listening to it, I'm telling you, I'm still living off the frequency of that dream because God answered my prayers accurately. And this is why this topic on this podcast was birthed because I heard from God. Has there ever been a time in your life you can put your life on the block and you can say, I heard God spoke to me? Well, this was one of those moments. I know God gave me that dream to answer the the, the prayer or prayers that I've been praying for years on a particular matter. He just answered it just like that. I was just in a moment to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And some of you, God has given you dreams. And some of you are not aware that God's talking. You can't make sense of it. You know, and be careful. Be careful now. You get a dream. Now you run into everybody. Well, I got this dream. Can you tell me what it is? Some people, you shouldn't even go to them and tell them your business. Don't tell them no dream. Don't tell you, you got, listen, you've got to make sure that they have a Joseph's anointing, a Joseph anointing to where they can interpret dreams. Just like the story in the Bible, the king went to several other people to interpret the dream. They could not. Some of them made up stories. There's some people who will make up stories in your life. There's some people who make up stories. The Lord told me to tell you this. God didn't tell them nothing. So don't believe that. You, that's why I told you, you want people who are hearing from God. Joseph was hearing from God. Who do you have in your life who's given you thus said the Lord and who is interpreting your dreams, your visions? Come on, man. Joseph was an interpreter of dreams. He had an anointing on his life. And the day when I got the dream, February 22nd, 2022, when I got the dream, I wrote this down. Joseph's dream was the answer because God will speak to you through a dream to give you answers to certain things you are dealing with. And if you check the scripture, Joseph's dream was an answer to, number one, injustice. Joseph went through a series of injustice, injustice with his family, his siblings. Sometimes siblings will do you dirt, man. But Joseph did not take matters up into his hands. Obviously, he's been praying, God, why? Why would you let, you know, I'm assuming he was praying, God, why would you let my own blood brothers do me like this. I didn't ask for this special jacket that my daddy gave me, but yet still they envied me. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you've got a sibling who's jealous over you over certain things. You didn't ask for it, but God has given you favor. But Joseph, (laughs) glory to God. He had a dream. Remember, he had a dream and the dream to others did not make sense. But God was giving him a prelude of what was to come. Listen, don't miss it. For those of you, you need to pay attention when you go to bed tonight. You need to say, Lord, like Samuel, Lord, glory to God, speak for your servant heareth. I'm hearing God. I'm listening to what you're saying. So Joseph 
His dream was an answer to the injustice that he would encounter. His dream was the answer to betrayal. Yes, they betrayed him. Injustice from his siblings, injustice from Potiphar's wife, in betrayal, how he was betrayed. Yes, his dream was an answer to lack. The reason, oh, listen, that Joseph's father sent the other brothers to Egypt to find food because there was famine in the land. Some of you are going through financial famine right now. You're going through a relationship famine right now. There's some deficiency in your life. God will give you a dream to give you the answer to that lack. I just saw on television recently a young lady, an African-American woman, started up a, a beauty product line. And she started an online beauty product line. And she said, all of a sudden, God just gave her the idea. She started up uh, first few months, a hundred and something thousand dollars. Long story short, now this woman is about in 2022. She is set to make $50 million. You heard what I just said. $50 million. A woman that came from nowhere had a dream. Ooh, had a dream. Where's your dream? Have you been dreaming lately? What has God put into your spirit? Don't take it lightly. Make sure you get the proper interpretation of it because like Joseph, the dream he had was an answer to the lack that was not only in his life, but his whole family's life. God's trying to send you as a Joseph, not just to liberate you, but to liberate your whole family, to break certain generational curses. I don't know who this is for. I just hope that you will at least make a comment, say something. If you believe God sent this podcast to you today, maybe it's an answer through a sermon, through a podcast. Because in a sermon, it's anybody who's speaking and whatever platform they use, God will use that to give an answer to your problems. Joseph's dream was also an answer to jealousy. Jealousy. The reason why his brothers did it was jealousy. The reason why Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph to her husband, jealousy, because he would not give up his righteousness for a moment of pleasure. He just said, no, I don't care. I know I can have you. I know I'm handsome. I know I got it, but I just got to say no to you. And she got mad and got jealous. Just like his brothers got jealous over him. He never asked his father for the jacket. But you see, the dream was an answer to the jealousy. Some of you are experiencing jealousy right now. You're experiencing lack, betrayal, injustice. And God is saying, hey, I'm giving you a dream. It's going to be the answer to your problem. Joseph's dream was also an answer to wrongful, wrongfully uh, accused, being wrongfully accused. When you are wrongfully accused, I mean, Joseph's back was against the wall. Who do you think people are going to believe? Of course, the wife of the king. You know, why wouldn't they believe her? She's got the money, the power, the influence. Her husband just to keep the peace because it is said, happy wife, happy life. So, of course, he's not married to Joseph. He got to live with her. So he's got to believe her. And Joseph was thrown into prison all because he was wrongfully accused of something he did not do. He did not do it. But yet still, he suffered. But the dream was the answer to being wrongfully accused. And then slavery See, <laughs> his dream was the answer to slavery. Yes, the, the brothers sold him out. He was sold as a slave. And sometimes the slavery, just like in America, there's different form of slavery. The history of this country and a lot of European countries and so forth, it was birth, their wealth and things. And a lot of people don't like to hear it. The truth hurts. It was birth out of slavery. But God gave Joseph a dream to help him understand 
that slavery cannot hold him down. And I firmly believe that. I firmly be- listen to me. Oh, some of you going to connect to this. I firmly believe every wrong that has been done, God is going to respond. It may take years, but God's going to respond. The word of God will not return unto him void. It has to accomplish every injustice. God has an answer for it. So if you're experiencing injustice, betrayal, lack, jealousy, being wrongfully accused, and and you, you feel that maybe even literally you are in bondage, I am here today to tell you that God will speak to you through a dream for your deliverance. And finally, Joseph's dream was an answer to wealth that he knew not of. Wealth, there are some wealth that is laid up for you that you have no idea about it, but God will allow you to go through a painful process, but when it comes, uh, when you, when your breakthrough comes, it's going to come, baby. I don't know why God would allow Joseph to go through all those things and then made him a prime minister, then end up having him turn around and bless the same people that sold him out. And Joseph's name was great ever since. I don't know why God took so long, but he had a dream. See, the dream that God will give you, whoo, maybe the answer to fix years of lack, years of pain, frustration in your life. So I just want to encourage you, man. Make sure you're hearing God. Make sure you're paying attention to the dreams you're having. Make sure you know the dreams that are of God, the dreams that are not of God. But when they are of God, Hold on to what God is telling you. On February 22nd, 2022, God gave me a dream. He answered a particular prayer that I've been praying about. And I am on high frequency. Ah! Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he? Somebody need a type. Won't he do it? You just need to shout out while you're in the car, in that office. Won't he do it? Yes. Won't he do it? I'm telling you, man. Listen to God. He's speaking. Thanks for watching, man. I hope you'll pass on this to somebody. Most importantly, can I hear from you? Did this do anything for you today? If it did, Post it right now. I'll see you next time.